Hey guys, and welcome back to a new video. In this video, I will show you how we can retrieve data from our Firebase Firestore database. So in the last video, you have seen how we can upload data to our database using those three edit tags. So we can add person data to our database. And for this video, I added a retrieve data button and a text view below that. And when we click on retrieve data, then all persons in our persons collection will be displayed in that text view. So when I click on that, you can see there are two persons in my database that are actually named the same, but those are two separate persons and they will all be displayed one after another here. As usual, I assume that you already set up your Firebase correctly and also that you set up your layout like I did here. If you have done that, then we can jump right into the coding. So first of all, I want to create a private function here to retrieve our persons. So private function retrieve persons and that will be a coroutine scope. So we will start that as usual in a coroutine scope in the IO dispatcher dot launch. And in here, also as usual, we will have a try and catch block. So we catch exceptions in case something goes wrong. And in the try block, we now need to do a little bit more than we did before. Because as you can see, for saving a person, we just had to, had to use a single line and the person was added to our database. And actually, yes, we can retrieve persons with a single line, but we have to do some additional stuff to actually display them in the text view. And here we need to create what is called a query snapshot. A query snapshot is basically the result of our query to Firestore. So I won't show you in this video how we can make particular queries to Firestore, but what we will do here is we will just get all available documents inside of a collection and those will be returned as a query snapshot. So we can set that query snapshot to our person collection reference and call dot get. And you can see that returns a task of type query snapshot. And every time we have a task in Firebase, we can call dot await after that. So all that line does here is it will take our person collection. So it will go to this path here to our person's path. And the get function will just return all available documents inside of that collection. And by calling await after that, we just wait until the result is basically available to us. So we only continue afterwards when we have that those documents saved inside of that query snapshot. And now we can just use that query snapshot to loop over its documents. So you can see we can, when we type query snapshot, we can refer to all of its documents. So our single persons in our database. And for that, I want to create a string builder. So we can just append strings, the basically the, the person's to string. And that will be just a normal string builder. And after that, we can just use a normal for loop to loop over all of our documents in our query snapshot dot documents. And if we now go on that document here and press control plus Q, then you can see that is a document snapshot now. So on the one hand in Firestar, we have query snapshots that contain a bunch of document snapshots and those document snapshots contain the information about a particular document. So in our case about our person and using that document snapshot, we can now reconstruct our person out of that. So we can write well person is equal to document dot to object and here we simply pass our person double colon class dot Java. So all we do with this line is we get the data from our document and we tell it that we want to convert the data to our person class. So we just tell Android Studio how we want to interpret that data that we got from the document. And since we use the KTX dependency of Kotlin, we don't even need this inside here that person class the Java. Instead, we can also just pass person as a generic parameter here and import to object. That will also work, but that won't work in Java. And after that, we can just use our string builder and append a new line. That line will be our person followed by a new line. And after that for loop, we just want to set this string builder text to our text view. For that, we need to switch the coroutine context because we can only modify UI inside of the main dispatcher. So with context dispatches.main 
and in here I will set TV persons dot text to our string boulder dot to string. And then we can copy that with context block, paste it in our catch block, and we place that line with a toast. So in case something goes wrong, we just want to show an error toast. This at main activity for the context, print e dot message and toast dot length long. And make sure to call that show afterwards. So just as a little recap, we get the query snapshot. So all of our available documents inside of that person collection, we get those documents with the get function. Then we create a string builder to be able to append all those person strings to it that we get from each single document inside of our query snapshot dot documents. And right now this will throw us an error because we will convert this document snapshot to a person and our person class does not have a default constructor. So in case we wouldn't have a particular value in Firestore, let's say we wouldn't save anything for the name and Android Studio will now try to convert that document snapshot that doesn't have a name to a person that must have a name then it will just crash because that's not possible. And for that reason, we need to create a default constructor for our person class. So let's go into that and we just add default parameters for each of our values. So we'll just make the first name empty by default, the last name empty by default and set the age to minus one. And then everything will work well. And in main activity, we also need to set an on click listener to our button retrieve data. And in here, we just want to retrieve our persons. And if we now run our app and try out if everything is working, you can see if I now click on retrieve data, then there's our single person that is in our database. So don't worry, in the example I showed you before, that was another Firebase project. So we can test that easily if I add some more persons here. Peter Miller, age 25 save him to the database, successfully saved. When I now click on retrieve data again, then we will also get the second person, which is Peter Miller. So I hope this helped you to understand how you can get the whole collection of Firestore. However, in the next videos, I will go deeper into retrieving data because there's much more to explore and much more important stuff to know. But if this video helps you to understand that, then please let me know that in the comments. And also, if you have any questions, really don't mind asking them, then I will take my time and answer them. Have a good day. See you in the next video. Bye bye.